so animal communication um, is about us having a thought conversation with an animal and to me there's a universal language by which all beings communicate which is made up of images, uh, thought intention, um, emotion, sometimes we pick up emotion from animals and also a, a kind of a sensation, often we get information through sensation. When all those bits are put together, um, the results can be amazingly accurate. I don't know whether there's somebody that smokes or has, has done in the car, but I've seen like a roll up and the window wound down a little bit. Do you know when you're smoking and you're driving or and there's a little gap in the window and a very thin cigarette. She'd quite like the windows wound down a little bit more, actually, really? she says. <laughs> but um, that she's saying, you know, sometimes there's um, a kind of unspoken argument between you and your partner, like, you know, a kind of disagreement. But she, the dog's, just, Millie's just saying, well, if you just said what you thought or wanted, <laughs> and she just said what she wanted, then why aren't you actually, why do you get all fluffed up about it? Why don't you just say it, Instead both of, of you? Yeah. Shoes, it's just like, this is what I want, this, this is, is what I want. Advice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she kind of feels she's right actually about that. <laughs> it's the, yeah, yeah, you know. It's not the norm to know these things. So I was really, really impressed with what Susie said. Even in an argument, uh, my partner's the same as well. We just sort of like, if we've got to say, we will if it's necessary rather than so I suppose Millie can actually pick up on that we'd like to say more but we're being thoughtful <laughs> towards each other Millie actually on my behalf confessed about me smoking in the car so um, I don't know if I should have asked really was that a problem but um, obviously I'll, I, I will put the window down a bit more now, I have learned. So I am quite surprised she noted about the smoking in the car. He's making me aware that his tail got caught in something or there was a bend or a twist at some point that was really painful to him. Um, someone shut it in a door in a pub oh, and for a long time oh, it was at a funny angle. Oh, <laughs> bless him. Oh. Yeah, he was so angry with that person. He said that person was a smoker. Um, I think, yeah, I think they've been outside to smoke and obviously they came back in. Ah, and... I don't, he didn't know whether they were in charge of their faculties, but he, <laughs> he was so angry with that person. He held a kind of, I can't believe you were so clumsy, sort of. Yeah. Normally they don't hold, I don't no. feel they hold things, but I feel like he did hold um, that. I think he's really chuffed with what's happening. I think yeah, he yeah, feels yeah. that he's getting his voice heard and that's why oh, we're getting this yeah, yeah. reaction. Um, yeah, the, the, we were sat in a pub and someone had gone out for a cigarette and then shut his tail in the door. And then for a long time after that, his tail was like a, a funny a funny angle. But again, because it was so long ago, I just, I don't even think about it anymore. And it wouldn't be something that I would have thought he would have thought about, um, but obviously he does. <laughs> When you're hoovering, she said she would quite like you to go right round the edge because it feels like there's a lot of things in your house, <laughs> uh, and and she'd quite like you to go round the right round the edge because it feels like there's a bit of dust accumulating, which she <laughs> has a dim view well, of. Well, I'm well. really sorry about that, no, I could but well she is called the Duchess. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and it is. Um, our house was built in 1795. Wow. Um, and it's very low ceiling, and it is. It's very very small rooms and yeah. And so I've got quite dark three. carpet. I feel like yeah. I've got a very dark carpet, like a, I don't know what the colour is. There is a but, but dark brown carpet with three right. beds for her, so that takes ah. up quite a while, ah. a bit. She says she's not your pet. She's your absolute friend and soulmate. Um, <laughs> she's, you know, she's your girl. She's your... Uh, she, but she definitely take she she wants your protection. She's not um, so she's not a bossy. You know she's not to the point where she's in charge of you, if you like. Her relationship with you is that of sort of daughter friend. Uh, that's the sort of it's very different for different dogs and um, <coughs> for different animals. They do different things. But she's she's saying showing me uh, like friend but soulmate. Yeah. I'm not your pet. Mm. She showed me um, 
that she chased uh, somebody. Now I saw I saw white fur and I thought it was a cat. <laughs> um, and she's saying, and she talks very quickly, and she's saying, I um, I even actually managed to. <laughs> I felt that I got the cat's leg. I managed to touch. I nearly got it. You know, it was like that. I nearly got wow. the cat. Um, but there's a feeling of her just managing just to catch that fluff in her in her mouth. Um, it's incredible um, to get to know the animals you're with, to listen to them. The cat asks to be chased and loves it and uh, the cat will go through the cat flap waiting for Arya to come along so that Arya will bark at her. Yes, um, and they have their special moments. And she was so happy to get the cat's paw. Um, it's the affirmation that she sees me as her equal and I'm so happy that she knows that I don't look down at her.